Good day everybody and welcome back to DX Explorer for another video. I'm back with uh, one of the first projects that I published here on the on the YouTube channel and is the Sputnik Vision Receiver. You know that it has been through some modifications and it had a lot of changes and it became a little bit complicated uh, talking about the, the parts count because initially the idea was to build a very very simple region receiver with acceptable performance that it's easy to build by beginners and I kind of got uh, further and further from that idea and uh, I complicated the schematic with filters and switches and so on and bandpass filters and um, I decided to quit all that go back to the to the basics and simplify it again just as it was originally so um, before jumping into the, the all the details uh, behind the receiver and give you some tips on how to to build it easier and make sure you don't make mistakes and it works from the first time first i gotta talk about some news uh, on the pcb boards because i was always asked uh, not just about this receiver but many other projects that I published on the blog or here on YouTube um, and that is where can I buy PCB boards well uh, I had a hard time <laughs> making this PCB board I ran out of transfer paper so I had to use something else and um, I had to do the, the transfer about four or five times until I got it right and I ended up with a decent PCB board so I decided to use a PCB way um, so from now on you will still have in the download folder um, a file that you can print it and uh, um, make your PCB board using the toner transfer method but you will also have a link in each folder and also in the, each blog article that contains a schematic and a PCB design uh, that you can go straight to PCB way and order the, the boards from their website and talking about PCB way Stick around for 30 more seconds and I'll be back with the details on the receiver. Are you tired of making homemade PCB boards that don't always come out the way you imagine them to be? Right now you have PCB Way. With excellent PCB prototyping services, all you have to do is to open your account on PCB Way, use the software of your choice to design your PCB board, upload the Gerber files and place your order. Soon you'll end up with professional and excellent looking PCB boards for your projects. PCB Way also offers PCB assembly services, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing and even more. PCB Way is the way. Okay, so we are back. <laughs> Here's the, the little PCB board. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying, I struggled uh, making it, but yeah, it didn't turn out so bad. Sorry for uh, all the mess in here, but I did a couple of modifications, uh, last minute modifications. So um, yeah, but it works great. So let's talk really, really quick about uh, the things that I've done. Um, so basically, uh, if you watch the, all the videos, you know I did a bunch of modifications, but the original idea that I started with when, when I made the first video was that I wanted a very simple uh, region receiver, basically just to improve the circuit that I had from the older magazine, the Romanian magazine, that uh, where I found the schematic and I built the receiver when I was uh, younger. So. Uh, because I wasn't happy about the way it worked, uh, but I liked it so much because it was the first amateur radio uh, receiver that I had and I could listen to the amateur radio signals and for me that was amazing. I decided to do the best I could with the knowledge that I had to improve that circuit and uh, make it sound better. And turns out that I succeeded, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm happy. And I've learned a lot uh, along the way. So. Uh, just a few tips um, on uh, how to build it easier as long as you respect the value of the components um, because it's very important everything else should should work um, first thing uh, you will have here uh, the few few of the capacitors i am going to um, point out on the blog article um, exactly which ones it's important that you have this miler because um, otherwise um, your LM386 might be getting close to self-oscillation and you will have a very very strange sound in your headphones uh, like an, something that seems that is not natural sound 
Uh, it, it feels like a, um, like a CW fiddle actually, but it's not. It's, it's getting close to oscillation. And that is because of uh, using ceramic capacitors in the audio portion of the circuit. Um, so yeah, I would recommend you these ones because they are great and they're doing a great job. Um, also, they help me get rid of um, most of the AM broadcast band interferences. Like if it's something really, really strong, you might still have some AM broadcast band interferences now and then. But everything else, it, it um, cut away um, using these ones. If I use ceramic capacitors, I could still have a little bit of breakthrough. So that is one important thing. Uh, number two, uh, I could quit using a bigger uh, trimmer capacitors. I'm using a tiny one just because it takes less space on the board. Mm, try to use good quality potentiometers. Uh, it's very important. These ones are not actually very good quality, but they still work fine. Uh, the receiver is still stable, but think about it that for the RF gain, um, every time you change this uh, setting, because the way this circuit is built is very simple, it will also uh, change the frequency a little bit. It's valid the same for the region control. You can actually use the region control as fine tuning sometimes. Um, and of course the multi-turn potentiometers for, for main tuning. Uh, yeah, good quality potentiometers. What else? Try to use for these two uh, capacitors. Um, I think, let me see, it's C16. C16 is actually one single capacitor, but I put a space for two capacitors ju just so you can spread the values. So initially it's supposed to be a hundred picofarads. What I did, I used two 47 picofarads capacitor just to stabilize the frequency a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, try to use NPO capacitors for C16, C13, and what else? There was another. No, that's it. Yeah, these two are very important. And if it's possible, you can also do it for C11 and C12. Yeah, uh, this as well. And that's it. You should be okay with anything else. But if you don't have NPO capacitors, just use regular ones and they will still work okay. Maybe it's just not going to be a stable in frequency. I used to be to have a voltage regulator in here. I removed that one as well, just because if the voltage was going under 12 volts, um, <clears throat> the LM386 would start doing that ugly motorboat sound. Uh, so I removed that one. Um, what I did in uh, the schematic, you will see that I'm actually usually usually I'm using one N4001 diode, the two of them, and it works great. But just because the CW portion of the band, you know, the signals are a little bit squeezed together, and I wanted to spread them a little bit more, I replaced these two with um, two diodes. I think they are BB405. And uh, these are great so far. Um, I managed to, I'm going to explain in a little bit how you um, tune it. But I, with the help of this uh, variable resistor, I managed to actually um, spread the signals really, really nice. So right now it's easy to tune even between the CW signals. For that reason, I also removed the one switch that I used to have in the in the older receiver. Uh, this one, I used to have this switch that will um, one position will allow me to listen uh, the CW portion of the band together with the uh, single side band, and uh, with the other position, I would only listen to uh, the CW portion of the band just so I can spread the signals between them a little bit. But no need for that because right now I can do it uh, in a simpler way. And also I used to have an audio filter, uh, same, uh, this used to be the filter. It was a very simple and rudimentary uh, low pass filter that I could use for uh, CW. But right now the way I build the audio circuit, it would sound great both in CW and also um, SSB, so no need for a separate filter. Unless you really want to, maybe you can build something external. Um, one other thing, 
the original schematic that I built was made for headphones. Uh, in this one I got things very complicated and I built an audio preamplifier and uh, a bunch of other things just so I can use an external speaker, which it was great. But to be honest, I stopped listening so much just because in my living room, sometimes I also have family coming over and I don't want to bother them. So I turn off the receiver. But before when I was headphones only, I used to have it on my table next to the laptop, my right hand on the, on the mouse and my left hand on the tuning knob um, with the headphones on my head and listening to the stations. So it was great. So for that reason, and especially for having a lower battery consumption, we're going to use um, headphones. You can also use a small speaker. Um, the sound will not be very, very strong. If it's quiet in the room, maybe you can uh, hear, acceptable, but it's meant for headphones. Uh, just because even for portable is great. You just put your headphones uh, on your head and uh, yeah, it's great. Um, if you want, you can al always use, you know, some external powered speakers uh, or maybe you can use, uh, what I put it, a homemade LM386 audio amplifier. You can connect it on the output of the receiver and then you have a big speaker on the other side and it's getting quite loud, believe me. But uh, yeah, I like it with headphones the way it is right now. So yeah, I'm actually going to um, replace this. Uh, I'm going to put some other project in this box and make something smaller from aluminum and uh, have this one on my desk all the time. Just because, you know, I my hobby and the, this channel started with Sputnik. So I'm going to keep it like a good memory close to my heart. Okay, now let's talk about the coil. It is very simple, 13, uh, I think it's 13 millimeters uh, PVC pipe. You can use a plastic pen um, or a marker as long as it has the right diameter or at least very, very close, maybe 12 millimeters or 14. But you can always recalculate the coil depending on the thickness of the wire that you have and uh, some um, other things. I have some people uh, sometimes telling me that they build a receiver and they can't really exactly uh, tune it on the uh, right portion of the band and most of the time the reason is that they used uh, different thickness of, uh, of the wire. Uh, so instead of 0 0.35 for example they used uh, 0 0.5 which is quite big. <laughs> so uh, yeah you have to recalculate it because the inductance has to be the same. So anyway. Uh, the coil is very simple. You have the coil number three on top. This is for the frequency counter and it gets uh, You have the connection over here uh, It's not really important which one is the end which one is the beginning uh, Then the this coil is the receiver coil uh, the, the tuning uh, Sorry the the tune circuit um, This is important the beginning is number one the end of the coil is number two and this bottom one is the antenna coil coming from the, I would not call it RF preamplifier, it's more like a, a buffer stage between the receiver and the antenna, but it does amplify the signal a little bit. But anyway, this is the coil and it's also very important. Uh, the beginning of the coil is here, number one, the end, number two. Uh, always make sure you wind the coils in the same direction and you should be all set and uh, have no issues. To tune it is very simple. You can uh, use a frequency counter on uh, on the output. Um, you can, I don't know, maybe you have a transceiver and you can put it on 7.2 megahertz and you uh, send some CW signals. And the way I usually do it, um, I take the, the knob of the tuning knob all the way at the end and with the help of this uh, trimmer capacitor I'm going to set the frequency to 7.2 megahertz and then once that is set I'm going to take it all the way at the beginning up 10 turns and a big knob takes a while and of course with the help of this uh, trimmer resistor I'm going to uh, set the beginning to 7 megahertz so this way it will tune between 7 to 7.2 megahertz which is great. So anyway, let's uh, have a listen to the to the um, demo that I filmed last night, uh, just because uh, right now the propagation is not the best. 
and uh, I guess that's it for today. Please remember, soon I will replace all the, the PCB designs on the, on the blog. I'm going to start with the Sputnik region receiver, um, I think. But uh, it will take me a while just because I'm working a lot and I don't have too much free time to do this. But I will redesign everything in the new software and I'm going to make it available for you to order from PCB Way. So anyway, thank you for watching, thank you for sticking around. <laughs> everything started with the, with the Sputnik region receiver and look where we are couple of years later what it's two three years i can't remember when i opened the channel and i also fin finally got my my amateur radio license and i'm very happy uh, so yeah anyway that's it let's have a listen and i guess i'll see you in the next video until then 73 and uh, happy dxing Посчитал, что я на что-то написал не так. Добрый вечер. Я принимаю с рапортом пятерку девятка, а вы там девять человек не зовут. Я нахожусь на далеко от города Черкеска, на столице Зеленчукска, например.